Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com, and today we're going to continue our series on in-game tactics. Now, I will let you know that the last video did not quite get the number of views that I was hoping for, so not sure if that means uh, that everyone's just not as interested in the in-games, but I am going to try something different, and that is to make shorter videos of in-games. Uh, still have a lot of videos that I'd like to make on in-games, but let me know if you like the shorter condensed versions uh, of these. I want to make sure that you understand the, the concepts, but think I can get through them very quickly. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and jump into it. Uh, one thing that I see a lot in chess games, uh, people send me their games all the time to review, is when they approach the end game, they're many times not sure the best way to approach a king and pawn end game. Now, sometimes they have uh, a king and a pawn versus just a king. Uh, I've done another video on that. I will do others as well. Uh, but sometimes it's it's just like this. It's both sides have equal material and they don't know how to approach it. In this position right here, one thing that white many times will try, and it's white's move is to race as fast as possible over to this pawn on a7, capture it, thinking that, okay, the king and the pawn are going to be here, white's going to be up in material, but unfortunately that's not going to work. And so let's take a look at why that does not work, and then talk about some of the reasons that it doesn't, and then figure out the best line that white can take to make sure that they win in this position. So white has three options, uh, can come to e8, e7, or e6. e7 and e8 are going to work very similar, so we'll take a look at that. e7, and you can see black coming here to c3. Uh, king to d6, doesn't really matter, d6 or d7. White is still just approaching this a7 square. And then king here to d4. Now this is a an important square, and we'll take a look at this later in the video, but d4 and d5 are critical squares as well as c7. This will make more sense as we get later into the video. Now, from white standpoint, they can't really go south, so they're going to be, they can't go to c5, d5, or e5. Uh, so they're just going to continue with their same plan as before, and that's to come over to this pawn here on a7. Uh, so they're going to march that way. King's going to come to e5, king to b7, king to d6, and after king to a7, then king c7. As we said before, this is a critical square. If black can get his king to c7, this is going to be a drawn game. Now, the king can't come to b8. The king is pretty much stuck. So let's say it comes to a8. Well, then now just king to c8, still able to get to c7 fairly easily. Uh, and then after a7, uh, then king to c7, and this is stalemate. Uh, white cannot move at all. Uh, no one's under check. Uh, so this is a drawn game. So it looked like white could just race over, take that black pawn, but that did not work out. So let's go back to the very beginning and start to take a look at uh, where white went wrong and how white could have continued uh, to actually win the game. Now, earlier I mentioned that these squares in the center, this D4 and D5, are critical squares, and then eventually white wants to stop the black king from coming here to c7. So you always want to calculate where your opponent can go and then stop them from getting there. Before you do anything else, make sure that you stop them from executing the game plan that they have. White knows that they're going to be able to reach the pawns faster than the black king right here because it's white's move but they need to make sure they go about it the right way. And since the squares in the center here are critical, then white needs to start with the move king to e6. Now black's gonna, same plan as before, needs to come to the center, king to c3, but then after king to d5, you can see that black cannot move to the d4 square. This is exactly where black wanted to go, can't come to c4 as well, so if we look at the next move for black, probably just going to come to b4. Makes sense. You, you don't want to get further away from the action here. King to c6. 
and maybe king to c4 because it's again blocking off some of the squares that the black king can go to. So if we continue king to b7, king up here to c5, but after the king captures on a7, you can see that in the earlier example, the king was able to come here to c7, secure this square. It's not able to do that. It tries, it's coming here to c6, but now white can play the move king to b8, and now the black king cannot come to c7. And that is the main difference in white stopping the king from coming to this d4 square early on. And so now, it doesn't really matter where the black king goes. Let's say it comes here to b6. Well, now you can see pawn to a7. And then the next move, it's going to push forward to a8. And it's going to promote to a queen. So very, very important uh, that white starts with the move e6. And if it doesn't, uh, let's say you're playing as black. You need to understand that if they make a mistake and play king to e7, that you shouldn't try to race them. You shouldn't play king to b3 because they could just play king to d7. And even if you try to go to the center of the board, if you play uh, king to c4 now, well, you're just behind in a move. They can play king to uh, c6. And this is stopping a lot of the squares that you'd want to go to, whether that's c5 or d5. And so they're really just forcing you to play king to d4. But you've reached this square one move slower than you would have before. So now they can play king to b7. And now you're chasing them king to c5, king to a7. But then you can see king to c6 and now king to b8. And they're stopping that square here on c7. So because you made that one critical error of king to b3 early on, you were not able to reach the squares that you needed to. So this is uh, an in-game tactic. Always be thinking about how your opponent can stop you from winning. Even if you calculate, yes, I can get to the pawn quicker. See how you can make sure to stop your opponent from stopping you. So I uh, have a lot more of these videos, but if you wouldn't mind, feel free hitting the like button. Uh, let me know if there's other types of videos you'd like me to see in the end game. Do have some king and pawn in games, uh, whether that's just more king or pawns on one side. Uh, I do think king and pawn is something that everyone should focus more on, uh, but definitely interested to hear what everyone has to say. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.